Hi, this is St. Jerome of Crypto Experiences bringing you yet another crypto experience. Today is February the 27th of 2023. Only one more day left in February as it's the shortest month of the year. So what is an ISO 20022 compliant cryptocurrency? ISO 222 cryptocurrency compliant. Look on the chart. I am on fire. Anyway, these uh these currencies are on fire. Now I'm going to talk as if I am totally lo in love with the these tokens. As I've been doing a deep dive into these tokens, trying to find out all I can of these currencies. Um, I'll have to say pretty ignorant on it before I started doing uh, a bit of recent research. Now remember, this channel is grandfatherly advice. And my experiences in crypto, and this is one of my experiences. I'm along the road to uh, find out more about these currencies. I come from a Bitcoin first, Litecoin, uh, a little Ethereum uh, kind of background, uh, dipped in some other things. I actually got Stellar, uh, a little bit of Stellar quite a long time ago, a little XRP, but I didn't understand them at that time. So I guess that was a good move. Um I like Bitcoin. I like Litecoin. I think Bitcoin has a lot of uses for um, uh, legal tender as in El Salvador. And I think a lot of non-banked people can use Bitcoin. Uh, I like Litecoin because it's faster than Bitcoin. I see them as great um, currencies of uh, the blockchain. Uh, but you're going to have other people argue these currencies will do just as well as good as as any and some people are arguing in this community that uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, and all those are going away. Um, I do believe the list of cryptos myself, not financial advice, but I think the list I, I'm hearing, there's like 27,000 different cryptocurrencies. I want to tell you something. Uh, I made some, I think they're called SLP tokens, and I had made some cryptos. and I had trillions of them I was playing around, but it looks like that ledger is kind of like dead at the moment. I don't know, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of cryptos out there that aren't worth anything. I'm hearing the final number is going to be maybe around 24 or less that will really settle down to. So I think uh, I do think these are going to be some of the main ones here and then like the ones I previously mentioned, too. So without further ado, let's uh, dive into these ISO 222 uh, tokens. So upper left, we have Stellar Lumens or XLM. On the lower left, we have Algorand. Uh, next to it with the big blue X on a blue field is XDC. Then in the middle is IOTA. Next to it is XRP by Ripple Labs. Then the HBAR or Hedera. I think it's on the, uh, the, the IBM ledger maybe. I'm a little bit ignorant, like I said. And then in the top right, we have Cardano. And oh, I almost forgot Quant over to the right. So some of these are definitely ISO 222 compliant and some are rumored to be. So I'm going to take a dive into each one and uh, see what see what it has to say for each one. What is XRP? Well, my friends who are in the Litecoin community think XRP is a banker coin. And there's a lot of truth to that, but not maybe with total disdain. I'm going to read a little bit what XRP is. Ripple is a real-time growth settlement system, currency exchange, and remittance network created by Ripple Labs, a U.S.-based technology company released in 2012. Ripple is built upon a distributed open-source protocol and supports tokens representing a fiat currency, cryptocurrency, commodities, or other units of value such as frequent flyer miles or mobile minutes. Well, is, I should call it XRP. XRP was by Ripple Labs, and XRP is the token. XRP is the granddaddy of this group. You see it goes back to 2012, uh, right after uh, Litecoin in 2011. Um, and it's going to be used for communication, liquid liquidity uh, amongst financial institutions and some of those other things I mentioned. The next one of the ISO uh, coins to introduce and we've talked about before is Stellar Lumens. 
there's a symbol for stellar. We did a deep dive on the 1988 Economist, if you recall, and it had a medallion on the front that looked a lot like the stellar on the Phoenix rising from the ashes. It was going to be the one world currency as predicted by the 1988 Economist. I did not notice this before, but if you look very carefully at that medallion on the Phoenix, there are two slashes they are just like really stuck close together. So, I mean, you couldn't get much closer to looking like stellar than that. A lot of proponents of Stellar are saying it's going to be the one world currency. It's going to be the one between people, whereas XRP is going to be the settlement liquidity between institutions, banks, or financial uh, places, whatever they call them in the future. I think the term bank may be going away. The next coin on the list that seems to be part of the big three is... XDC, cut off a little there on the bottom, but uh, I'll read about that. The XDC network is a groundbreaking blockchain with inexpensive speed, scalability, low fees, and military-grade security. Using XDC network, businesses can improve their record-keeping, exchange da data, and transfer assets more efficiently and more securely. Explore enterprise solutions trade on this. I'll have to say, I don't know much about XDC, but it seems to be right up there with XRP and XLM in importance. And it's also one to help liquidity. So um, I don't have any XDC yet, and I'm going to kind of need to look around to do that. Now, I was playing around a little bit today to see where I could get some of these things. And I think you can go to simpleswap.io and uh, swap out a another crypto, uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin. Um, for, I think, for XDC. Now, don't quote me, not financial advice, but that's one way to do it. And there's other exchanges, too, that can you could probably make the trade for. The next one to look at in this group is HBAR, otherwise known as Hedera. And I'll read a little bit about that. Hedera is a fully open source public distributed ledger that utilizes the fast, fair, and secure hashgraph consensus. Its network services include Solidity-based smart contracts, as well as native tokenization and consensus services used to build decentralized applications. So again, these uh, cryptos we're looking at are a form of trust, smart contracts, and you can't cheat the system. That's the point of them. You can't break the system. And that's the great thing about blockchain and ledger technology. I'll have to confess, I don't know much about IOTA. So again, I'm learning upon my way. I hope you're learning a little bit too. Um, my purpose today is to present these to you, not as financial advice, but they, at least if you've never heard of them before, uh, to do a little investigation and see what's the what's all about the ISO 222 tokens. Um, the SWIFT exchanges, the SWIFT system is going to go to ISO 222, and I think a lot of that's already going on. So, anyway, here is, oops, sorry, I got rid of myself. Uh, IOTA is the first distributed le ledger built on the for e Internet of Everything, a network of exchanging value and data between humans and machines. Ooh, designed entirely without fees, no blocks, no miners. When you send an IOTA transaction, you validate two other transactions. This allows IOTA to overcome the cost and scalability limitations. Wow. Well, that sounds good. So I will just learn a little bit about IOTA. I did not know. The next coin or token to look at is Algorand. Um, I had heard a tip a long time ago, that's a couple of years ago, I think. Uh, that Algorand was something you might want to invest in. So I threw a little bit of dollars at it. That's one thing I, I do. I have fun in crypto and I'll throw a little bit, you know, 20 here, 30 here. And sometimes they go well and sometimes they don't go well. Algorand looks like a going to choose. It's in the, the compliant system. Um, I did that with something called Badao. Hmm. Badao. Uh, it was up like, high water point about four cents now it's like way under a penny i think it's about a tenth of a penny now mm. so i didn't get rid of it but not worth much anyway this is not about Badal. this is about uh algorand and the iso compliant um blockchains 
the world's most powerful and sustainable blockchain. Our institutional, this is by Algorand, our institutional great blockchain infrastructure is the first and only to achieve decentralization, scalability, and security without compromise, and while being environmentally sustainable, built on Algorand, trending on Algorand. So anyway, that's what they say. Of course, it is their token. A little more to add that I just found out, Algorand is a proof of stake blockchain cryptocurrency protocol. So as I said, I don't know much about the Cardano blockchain. I did invest a little bit in the past in it, but not very much. And I think I, I traded it for something else. Uh, let's see what it says. Cardano is one of the biggest cryptocurrencies by market cap. It's designed to be a flexible, sustainable, scalable blockchain platform for running smart contracts, which will allow the development of a wide range of decentralized finance apps, new crypto tokens, games, and more. And the uh, big thing we're hearing here over and over again is liquidity. And also, um, and also smart contracts. So the last crypto to look at is Quant. Let me read a little bit of what Quant is about. Quant are tokens whose main role is provide digital access to a particular service or an application, which are made part of the Quant platform. The access is provided by, to both users and developers. In addition to the number of tokens, the access fee will also be based on a fixed fiat currency amount. So, I heard someone talking about this, and again, I, I plead a little ignorance of it, but I heard quant is kind of going to be in the middle of things, and I think it's got a lot more importance than maybe I knew it was going to have. Um, I want to say one thing about, I think, pretty much all these ISO 222 uh, compliant tokens, I see myself they can be used for good, and I can see they can be, be used, I would consider bad. Bad would be if they are taken over and in a central bank system um, where they would could control the users in some way. Uh, good would be that the people are allowed to use, say, a uh, crypto for currency such as XLM um, very fast, makes banking somebody quite attractive you can make transactions in xlm and xrp in a matter of seconds i think i heard xrp a day three seconds whereas bitcoin may be 40 minutes depending on what you're doing or 45 minutes i was hearing in one transaction it took 45 minutes a few years ago uh for bitcoin and cost five thousand dollars they're moving a bitcoin and a half i'm like oh wow that's a hefty fee versus the pennies that uh, that these other ones are at right now but um to be fair, Bitcoin's improving on speed and Lightning Network. Uh, Litecoin's faster, and it's pre it's pretty good. But yet, right now, they both have use cases. You can you can use Bitcoin and you can use Litecoin. Right now, Bitcoin is being used as a legal tender and being looked at to be used legal tender uh, in several countries. And Litecoin has like the Litecoin Visa card, and it's very easy to fund your card with litecoin and you can spend it any place that takes visa which is pretty neat like right now are the iso 222 tokens going to take over the world of finance they have a good chance to so don't uh, study up on stellar lumens xrp from ripple labs algorand xdc and iota and then don't forget also we had in there cardano right that and quant so thanks again for watching this podcast uh i hope this wasn't too uh too different for you for my podcast but i'm trying to learn along the way and this kind of helps me learn and then i learn when you make good comments uh below which was which is very helpful for example it was from a comment last time i found out the 1988 economist cover when they had the medallion on the phoenix in his chest actually had what looked like a stellar with two bars across it i did not notice the second bar before so um i have a patreon channel it's patreon.com backslash saint jerome as you spell saint jerome over here on the bottom left of the screen i also have a 
contest going for when I get a thousand subscribers, I will give out at least a hundred thousand Satoshis, which is somewhere around 23 to $25 currently. Uh, and I probably will sweeten the pot since it'll be up to a thousand. I'm, I'm so grateful for, um, the likes I've been getting, I've been grateful for the views and, uh, and for subscribers. So if there's something you'd like me to do a little deep dive on and come back with what I can, I will. Um, yo hablo también español. Puedo hacer, uh, estos videos en español. I speak Spanish also. Mon français, uh, se n'est pas très bien, mais je peux essayer de faire ça, uh, ça. And my French isn't so good, but I can try to do it in French too. So I appreciate a thumbs up. Right, uh, like and subscribe and join that contest. Um, if you want to get quantities of XRP and uh, XLM, I, they probably all these different currencies, um, and you're going to spend around two thousand dollars or more. Um, Caleb and Brown is where to go. And if you use my link down below for Caleb and Brown, you'll get a permit discount at 3.5%. And what's cool about Caleb and Brown is you get your own personal broker. You can email them at any time. You can call them on the phone. And it's, wow, I mean, for, for what you're paying for a percent, that's something else. And they will move as little as 2,000, but if you're a big spender, which this guy isn't, if you're a big spender and you want to invest a lot, they can actually get millions of dollars in uh, different currencies too. So they are the guy to go to. Now, if you want to go small, and uh, just kind of dive into this. Um, I found the simplest way for me to do it is I go to the Strike app down below a discount. Uh, and then with the Strike app, I can buy some Bitcoin and then you move it to some kind of swap. I like to put it in the Exodus wallet and just swap right there. You can keep the uh, Bitcoin in your Exodus wallet and then swap for a currency. Um, and you can swap it for, uh, for most of these here, I, I believe. Um, I've used simpleswap.io in the past, especially when it's hard to get theta. Uh, and that's another possibility if you get a currency, if you ha already have something you'd want to trade, you can get there. Now you have to pay pretty good percent for that, but if you really want to get them easily, that's one way to do it. So if you have any questions, please leave them below. And I really appreciate you coming and watching today. Thank you very much. I will see you soon, hopefully within about a week or so or less. Goodbye.